On this channel, we talk a lot about how Smash Ultimate is a mental game, but Smash is also a much more physical game than you think. You know, we're not fully VR yet, so you're not jumping like Mario and shoulder checking people like Wario yet. But Smash is physical enough that being healthy will help you guys get sick at the game. And if you want even more help getting sick at the game, head on over to ProGuides.com. We've got a lot of great educational resources over there like character-specific guides, lessons from top pros, and a live coaching platform. So give it a shot. Now for most players, few things matter as much as hand health. In Melee, most players already know about hand health. That's because one of the game's best, Hacks, Money, essentially broke his hands from playing. It's no secret that Melee is the most physical, you know, tech skill oriented Smash game. But for a while, it wasn't clear how much that tech skill could cost you if you weren't careful. In the world of Ultimate, players aren't nearly as concerned about hand health. That's because Ultimate is a slower, less taxing game, and its player base is a lot younger than Melee's. Almost no one under 20 worries about hand health because your body's plastic and doesn't hard punish you for doing dumb stuff yet. But okay, as we dive into Ultimate, we want all of you guys' opinion on the question of the day. Who do you think is the character most difficult on your hands in Ultimate? So go ahead and let us know down there in the comments and we'll dive into this topic more. But even young Ultimate players should keep an eye on their hands. First of all, you know, while you might start out as an ultimate kid now, you're going to end up an adult by the time SSBUMUE comes out. That's Smash Bros. Universal Mega Ultimate Edition, the seventh installment of the game, which will have 167 characters. And as you age, you should watch your health because science shows that your body literally gets worse at healing itself. That's because, one, you lose muscle and bone mass, which protect your body from harm. Two, your heart rate and lung capacity decrease which slows your blood and oxygen flow, which affect how quickly you heal. And three, your reaction time dulls, which means that, you know, you're less quick to react to a stinging pain and bring the body to a halt. And that makes injury and overexertion more common. Even if Ultimate isn't as straining as Melee, it doesn't have to be to mess up your hands. For a lot of people, it's not raw strain and insanely, you know, speedy hand movements that cause problems. It's just repeated activity. This is why carpal tunnel is one of the most common injuries for a lot of offices and workplaces. It's not that typing at a keyboard or operating a computer is physically taxing. It's that doing that for eight hours a day is physically taxing. You know, a lot of hand injuries come from repetitive strain or basically forcing your hands to do the same motion over and over. You end up working the same muscle over and over until the muscle becomes inflamed and exhausted. The same thing happens with sports-related injuries, which is why we have whole injuries named after sports like tennis elbow. So playing ultimate and excessive amount can cause injury. It's even more likely to cause injury if you're also playing a ton of games or using the computer a lot. You're asking more of your hands than you are most of your body. This also means that if you end up working a nine to five with a lot of emphasis on a computer work, you have to be even more careful about your gaming habits. And all of that leads us into this main topic of this video, how you can keep your hands and forearms healthy. So before we start, we should say one thing. This video is not a substitute for a doctor's visit. Let me just put that out there. If you got major arm pains, you should check in with a physical or occupational therapist. In other words, we're gonna start with the pre-game warm-up, then we're gonna move into some stretches that you can once you're warmed up. After that, we're gonna give you guys a few strengthening exercises that you can use to prevent future injury. And we'll cap everything off by giving you guys a few resources where you can get even more stretches, exercises, and info. So we recommend watching this video even if you aren't having any hand pains right now. A lot of these stretches and exercises can be great to help you guys build muscle and flexibility. In turn, that extra muscle and flexibility will help you guys avoid injury in the future. All right, now let's start with warming up, literally. You want to literally warm up your hands. There's a reason why players carry hand warmers and why pros complain about venue temperature. Warm hands move faster, play better, and might even be healthier. That's because the liquid in the joints in your hand becomes more fluid, making them easier to move, not to mention you have better blood flow. So warming your hands is pretty simple. You can use a hand warmer or stick them in a bowl of warm water or just rub them together to create friction. Once you do that, you wanna start getting more blood flowing to your hands too. So you can do this through a few simple stretches. These stretches are more movement based in order to get blood flowing into the hands. You can do 10 wrist circles in each direction, basically closing your hands and rotating them around the wrist clockwise and counterclockwise. 
You can also extend your fingers out in each direction, stretch them out and then bring them back in. Or you can slowly curl your fingers out from a fist and then back in. There are a few ways to do this stretch, two of which you can see right here from Caitlin McGee and Levi Harrison. They're both physical therapists who specialize in esports. These stretches get your blood moving, but you should follow them with a handful of other stretches to help build flexibility and strength and relieve tension. There are quite a few stretches that you can go with, all of which can target different areas. You know, we often think all hand pain is carpal tunnel just because it's the one big hand injury everyone talks about. But you could feel pain around your elbow because of how it interacts with your wrist movements or on the edge of the hand under the pinky or along the thumb because of the finger and hand strain. So let's talk about some different stretches that can handle and prevent different types of pain. The extended arm stretch is a pretty good example. You know, you sit down, extend your arm out so that your elbow is straight and the arm is level with your shoulder. Then you turn your palm upward, hold your fingers with your other hand and pull down towards the body. For an alternate variation, you can also pull your hand upward rather than downward. So you can hold that stretch for 30 seconds to one minute or do five or six sets of 10 seconds. You can also hold the palm to increase the stretch on the wrist rather than, you know, the fingers and hand. Remember that for all these stretches, it's better to move slowly and carefully and to breathe deeply during the process. You know, deep breathing powers up We Fit Trainer for a reason. By deep breathing, we increase oxygen flow to our muscles. The slow and careful movements help us feel out where to hold the stretch. With the underhand stretch especially, it's easy to bend and just push the wrist too far. You just want the feeling of your muscles lengthening and stretching. You don't want pain. For another easy stretch, you can bring your palm down with one hand, tuck your fingers underneath, then hold that position as you strain the elbow. You'll feel a stretch that runs all through the wrist and the forearm right down to the elbow. If you have a bad posture while gaming, you may get shoulder pain too. You can unpack your shoulder muscles by using a child's pose from yoga. You wanna sit on your shins and just pull your body forward so your core is on top of your thighs. Then you stretch your arms out straight in front of you. You can just hold this position for a few minutes and then let your back and shoulder muscles stretch out while you kinda just zen out. Okay, so now that we've covered stretches, let's cover some exercising tips to help you guys build strength. Scientific studies show strength training can seriously reduce our chance of injury and pain. Resistance training can increase ligaments, tendons, joint cartilage, and even bone minerals. That's most of the stuff holding your bones, joints, and muscles together. One sports medicine study found that strength training reduces sports injuries to less than one third and overuse injuries could be almost halved. However, there are tons of parts of the body you could strengthen and a lot of ways to exercise. In exercising, there's also a chance you mess up and pull something. For gaming, you want to strengthen your arms. And in particular, you want to build strength and endurance. That means your goal isn't to get huge and, you know, lift 100 pound kettlebells with one arm. It's more to build muscle, ligament, and tendon strength so that you can just handle more continuous stress. It's more Little Mac and Wii Fit Trainer and less Ken and Ryu. So here's a quick tip. Instead of focusing on lifting the biggest weights possible a few times, do more repetitions and more sets with smaller weights. The weights shouldn't be so small that they're not challenging, but not so big that you barely get one set of 10 repetitions in. To get an idea of what strength training really looks like, Levi Harrison often recommends doing three sets of 20 repetitions. Pace and patience is as much the trick in exercise as in smash. So while you're exercising, be sure to breathe well and slow your movements. Well-placed repetitions will help you build more endurance and muscle. Not to mention it helps prevent exercise injury by placing less sudden strain on the body and by giving your body time to see if something's going wrong. Now into some specific strength builders. Here's a super simple one, all right? You stick your hands out so that they're flat and then fan them out the sides. Then bring them back in. One set is about 30 seconds. To really build strength, it's good to use weights. With weight exercises, you're targeting your wrist and forearm, so you're gonna be able to move your hand and wrist, not your arm. For a lot of wrist and forearm you know, exercises, you should sit down with your back straightened and with your forearm resting on your thigh. This way, your wrist is making the motion, your forearm muscles are working, and your whole arm stays pretty still. For the first exercise, rest your arm on your thigh with your palm facing upward. Your wrist should be resting on your thigh. It should be two or so inches away from the knee. Take the weight in hand and just curl the weight down and then back up. That's a seated dumbbell wrist curl. For the next exercise, just take what you did with the seated dumbbell curl, but point your palm facing downward. Remember to take these exercises slow and focus on getting a full range of motion while also not letting your elbow lift up. 
So that's about it for today's video, but these exercises are really just starters. There's a lot more great ones that you can do that we're gonna link up in the description. If you want even more great exercises and stretches, head on over to Dr. Levi Harrison's channel. If you want great advice on how to game healthily, check out 1HP's YouTube channel and website. There's a ton of great advice there. If you want us to do more healthy tip videos just like this, let us know in the comments because, you know, at least one of our script writers clearly wants to turn this into a lifestyle channel. And there's plenty to talk about like posture, ergonomics, cool down exercises, and even how to hold your controller. If you're just looking for those nitty gritty lessons on in-game mechanics, then of course you should head on over to ProGuides.com.